optimization of settings, improving oxygenation, decreasing CO2, and weaning. Improving oxygenation. There's two main ways to improve oxygenation. One is titrating the T-low, and the other is increasing P-high, or P-high and T-high at the same time. Let's first look at titrating the T-low. Now, to improve oxygenation, one of the first goals is to maximize the in expiratory lung volume. To do this, we assess the, the termination point, and if the termination is 50, under 50%, you want to decrease the release time until a, it is at least 75% of the peak expiratory flow. Next, we can oxygenation by increasing P high or P high and T high at the same time. One way is to increase the P high to increase by achieving a threshold opening pressure. The P high should be adjusted only by two to five centimeter increments while monitoring hemodynamics. So all we're doing is increasing the P high but no higher than 30 centimeters of water by two to five centimeter water's increments. Additionally, T high can be lengthened. This increases gas mixing and recruits a VOI with longer time constants. You always want to assess hemodynamics if increasing P high or T high. If your patient has decreased cardiac output hypotension, you can consider therapeutics which increase cardiac output and blood pressure also so you're not limited to increasing your P high or your T high. Decreasing CO2, we're gonna look at sedation level, assessing the expiratory flow pattern, and increasing the minute ventilation. First, we always wanna assess for over sedation. Uh, here pictured is just a bispectral index monitor used to monitor sedation. Some ICUs have this. Um, sedation is a key thing. The patient always wants to be light enough where they can be aroused to light stimulation, um, where they're always maintaining spontaneous breathing. That is a key to APRB success is the spontaneous breathing where they can self-recruit themselves and to blow off the additional CO2. Second, assess the expiratory flow to make sure that the uh, peak expiratory flow termination point is within 50 to 75 percent. And if your oxygenation is acceptable, what you can do is you consider increasing your T low by 0.05 to 0.01 increments to achieve a peak expiratory flow termination point. Third, if not contraindicated, what we can do is we can increase the minute ventilation. One way you can increase, uh, sorry, this picture just shows that you can increase the T low. Increasing the T low, that's how you would achieve a 50% termination. Indicated, we can increase the minute ventilation. And to do that, we can either decrease the T high time, or we can increase the P high, or we can do them both at the same time. However, decreasing the T high increases the frequency. However, mean airway pressure is sacrificed. Also, when decreasing T high, less in expiratory lung volume is generated, and the T low should be reassessed and titrated to allow for appropriate release time. Weaning. Uh, weaning the P high and FI2. Uh, weaning to traditional mechanical ventilation stretch. Uh, 
first, when the patient's starting to look better and you want to decrease the settings, um, you would wean pee high like you would wean pee, only by a couple centimeters of water at a time, evaluating the patient's oxygenation status and hemodynamics. Um, decrease the FI2 first to attain to 50% before decreasing pee high, and decrease pee high only by two to five centimeters of water at a time. Um, if you're going to go put the patient on traditional mechanical ventilation, the patient's looking better and you think that they can tolerate traditional mechanical ventilation, um, consider only when your pee high is less than 20 centimeters of water. Um, you may have to compensate for the initial mean airway pressure loss with high peeps. And when I mean high peeps, I mean in the 12 to 15 centimeters of water range or even above. And um, for practitioners that are, have spontaneous breathing trials, they can use their traditional wing protocols when the patient meets criteria. Now, if you're using a Drake or a Hamilton medical ventilator, there's no need to switch to a different mode of ventilation to wean the patient from APRV. Uh, weaning is accomplished simply by decreasing the CPAP level. So we're going to decrease the P high while simultaneously increasing the CPAP time. So what we're going to do is we're going to decrease the pH in increments of one to two centimeters of water, while increasing the T high by 0 0.5 seconds in every reduction in pH. So when the pH is at an acceptable CPAP level, the patient may be considered for extubation. So as you can see from the picture here, the patient's on a CPAP level of 10 centimeters of water. So some people would extubate from a CPAP of 10 or CPAP of 8. It just depends on the physician's preference. Additionally, um, you can augment the spontaneous breaths with automatic tube compensation to elevate the work of breathing associated with the endotracheal tube or the tracheostomy tube. Uh, conclusion. Um, APRV is a biphasic mode of ventilation, and you can apply it in a variety of ventilators. It is just an alternative to traditional mechanical ventilation, and it is not superior. Patient selection is key, and spontaneous breathing are crucial to your success in utilizing APRV. And one must consider, is APRV justified over traditional modes of mechanical ventilation? Thank you.